March 31, 1880. The fame of Wabash, Indiana has been wafted upon every breeze and hurled from one point of the compass to another until every nook and corner in America has been reached. This is because she is the first city in the world to be lighted by electricity. It was the strangest light ever exhibited in these United States. Fort Wayne Gazette. Rarely does the geographic layout of a city guarantee its place in international fame, but such was the case in 1880 in the town of Wabash, Indiana, which enjoys the claim of being the first electrically lighted city in the world. They had this courthouse high on a hill that would allow the light to spread over the whole town and service the whole town and light the whole city. It was a wonderful thing. In 1879, Dr. Charles Brush of Cleveland, Ohio, was one of the first entrepreneurs to shed new light on the functional uses of electricity. Brush was working with a new arc lamp which generated power from a small dynamo, sending electrical sparks firing through two carbon rods, creating a bright white light. At the same time, in Menlo Park, New Jersey, Thomas Edison was perfecting his new incandescent light. In a heated publicity race, both men were eager to show how their inventions could light an entire city with electricity. Meanwhile, in Wabash, Indiana, Thad Butler, editor of the Wabash Plain Dealer, along with his partner T.P. Keeter, thought they could offer a solution to help Brush succeed in beating Edison. These two men were walking one night and noticed that big courthouse and thought maybe the top of that courthouse would be a good place to try lighting the town with these new lights they'd read about. Thad Butler went to Cleveland, talked to Charles Brush, presented him with the idea, he liked the idea, and so they brought it back to the city council. Notes from a city council meeting in February 1880 stated that Wabash would agree to pay $100 to the Brush Company to set up a lighting demonstration at the Wabash Courthouse in March. If the event proved successful, Wabash would pay the company $1,800 to set up a permanent lighting system in the town. The two editors from the Plain Dealer were thrilled and hyped the coming attraction with great flair. But as soon as the deal was signed, Wabash citizens began to question the move. The city's rival newspaper called the lighting event a stunt, and many worried about the motives of folks from out of town who might abscond with the tax money raised by the good people of Wabash, none of whom had ever seen electric lights before. People had read about electricity. Uh, people in Wabash had read about it, but they had never experienced it. They were doubting. Both newspapers had all these things that might happen, like the the cows being so stressed out from light all the time and so tired they wouldn't give milk. The chickens the same thing, they'd probably croak, they'd be so tired. As the time drew closer to the March 31st lighting event, tensions soared in Wabash. Plain dealer editor Thad Butler reported that one day the arguments grew so heated between the two Wabash newspapers, the editor of the rival paper accosted a plain dealer editor by holding a pistol to his throat and threatening him. Butler and many members of the city council began to doubt their decision. They have a moment when they are wondering, what have we done? <laughs> why, why did we decide to take this on? You know, will it work? On March 31st, 1880, special trains from all over the Midwest poured into Wabash, crammed with people hoping to see the spectacle. The tiny town of 2,500 citizens was flooded with more than 10,000 spectators from all over the country. So on March the 31st, at eight o'clock local time, it was pitch dark. And the arrangement was that uh, the lights would come on at eight o'clock at the stroke of eight there was tremendous tension in that crowd. They were standing there and hearing the clock go bong, bong, bong. 
all of a sudden the lights came on. And it was such an awesome thing. They were so bright that people were absolutely quiet for a little bit. They, they didn't even say anything. It was like... <gasps> there was dead silence. You could have heard the proverbial pin drop. And then the cheers, of course, and the celebration. And supposedly, a farmer out in the country, it was so bright out there, and he saw this light, and he ran in and said, get on your knees, mother, the world is coming to an end. <laughs> The crowd spread over the suburbs, making tests by looking at watches and reading newspapers in an area that just moments before was pitch black. In short, Wabash now enjoys the distinction of being the first city in the whole world to be lighted by electricity. Chicago Tribune. This became a great matter of civic pride. And some of that still exists today.